the factors that you and I have talked about, you know, the um, multiple partners, the drugs, the Viagra, all these different things, those weren't factors that my patients really said would have contributed. They're factors that are happening for them now. In other words... Now they're positive. Yeah. So, yeah. So what I'm finding is, is that they're, I think they're using, though they, they are obvious factors for contributing to HIV spread, I find that my patients are um, utilizing things like multiple sexual partners, um, Viagra, crystal methamphetamine, alcohol, marijuana, um, internet porn, that it's more like uh, a medication, that it's, it's, that that's the numbing effect for them or that that's what they're utilizing now to cope. But I, I don't, I mean, though anybody I think could look at those and say, yeah, well, you know, those must be con factors contributing to the spread of HIV. I haven't really specifically had my patients tell me that that's what contributed to the spread. Uh, my patients would say that, that what contributed to the spread for them, um, you know, that, that they were, they, they, don't, they don't necessarily, like, they don't, there's not that concept, there's not the connection per se. Like sitting down and saying, wow, what contributed to my spread? What contributed to my infection? You know, the discussions go more toward, you know, more pulling the camera back and like a general umbrella conversation of, you know, what's life like for you right now? And what was life for you before your infection? And life before their infection, oftentimes, um, was a life of uh, rejection from family, um, low self-esteem, um, you know, looking for love in all the wrong places, deeply desiring, um, um, a, a partner, one individual. I ask a lot of my patients, you know, if you had one wish, what would it be? And, you know, a lot of people may assume it would be like, oh, well, you know, they probably want a lot of sexual partners. No, that's not true. Most of my patients' response has been, I wish I had someone to love me, and I wish I had someone to love. So, you know, what their life was like before HIV, um, they felt very disconnected from their community, their religious community. Um, or spiritual community, or however you want to look at that. I think it's, I would say more religious community, really, because um, they felt very disconnected from church, typically thrown out of church, or um, felt hated by God, judged by God, um, hated by their families, abandoned, literally abandoned by their families, ignored, rejected. Um, and so, um, you know, their life now is, um, and not all of them, you know, their life, for some of them, their life now is parties, you know, multiple sexual partners, unprotected sexual encounters, um, crystal methamphetamine, um, boredom, you know, they're incredibly bored. And they say, well, the, the boredom actually is what's contributing to all these, they feel, they've stated, is what's contributing to a lot of the the things they get into in terms of uh, self-destructive behaviors. Um, and I feel like as a physician, or phys as physicians, we have a lot that we can contribute into the lives of individuals who have, you know, inherently felt disconnected from their families as a young child, disconnected from their religious community as an adult or young adolescent, um, um, and, you know, disconnected from even their own community when they become positive, because now you've got, in their own community, you've got HIV negatives and HIV positives. So yet there's another layer of disconnection or separation. So I figure we as practitioners, we as physicians, have an opportunity to um, speak into the lives and, and be in the lives of our patients in a way that really matters in a sense that they get that they matter most. They get that they're worth fighting for. They get that they're a valuable human being and that their life isn't over. Their life wasn't over, and not just because they're HIV positive, but their life wasn't over at five years of age 
you know, or six or seven years of age when they were, um, you know, chastised for how they behaved, if they behaved in a way that wasn't societally a norm. And so, um, yeah, I think that, uh, that the medical community is missing a great opportunity to be in the lives of, of our patients, especially the HIV community, in a way that really matters most.